as per the new eu regulation uh, marketing authorization holders are now required to perform the uh, single direction analysis uh, within the ema hosted environment in line with revision 1 of gp module 9 and new evidas reports and data output so practically as a part of the process a uh, marketing authorization holder the national competent authority and agency are expected to ensure continuous monitoring of the utilra vigilance database so a two weeks interval between the reviews of utilra vigilance data is recommended for active substances contained in the medicinal products included in the additional monitoring list and it is recommended that the interval between the reviews of the utilra vigilance data should not exceed 6 months so what happens is that the qualified person for pharmacovigilance of a marketing authorization holder uh, has the right to appoint up to 5 evidas users so the registered users are able to access evidas and related reports uh, including the electronic uh, reaction monitoring reports which is typically called ermr uh, line listing and the qpqv can make the ermr and line listings available to signal management team uh, within their organization so there is something called level 2b access which is basically an additional and specific access right that can also be assigned by the qpqv or uh, the trusted deputy to the registered eb web or evidas users Uh, of the marketing authorization holder so it includes access to the case narratives which makes the uh, analysis of the signals uh, much easier so at avisa life sciences uh, we provide uh, qppv services for our clients and we uh, manage the signaling process under the qppv well there are some instances when the clients are already having some uh, qppv arrangement so uh, in those instances uh, those clients provide us the user access uh, so that we can support them in the signal management process well uh, you know the basic principles of uh, signal validation always remain the same so there are some important elements which should always be taken into account uh, whenever uh, we are performing signal validation uh, based on the review of uh, icsr data i would say the first and the foremost thing is the previous awareness of the drug event relationship uh, that is the level of information on the adverse reaction which is already there in the packet insert or the product information Uh, we also need to see whether the signal relates to an adverse reaction already included in the SNPC for other medicinal products uh, containing the active substance of interest. Uh, we also need to see whether the association has already been assessed uh, in the initial application for uh, marketing authorization, uh, RMP, uh, PSQR, or any other regulatory procedure. Uh, you know, it's very important that whenever we take into account the cases. we are excluding duplicates of course uh, we do make that effort to remove that but uh, sometimes uh, there is a practical challenge in that so i just want to emphasize that uh, of course uh, wherever the cases are there with strong causal association uh, they need they need to be looked into very carefully for example if we have the cases of positive d challenge or a positive d challenge uh, those reaction relationship is of course a very important factor uh, similarly uh, we need to take into account the clinical relevance and context Uh, the severity and the seriousness of the reaction uh, reactions which are occurring in vulnerable population for example uh, pregnant women or the reaction could occur in different patterns of use which could be like overdose abuse misuse yeah. addition sources of information may always provide uh, further evidence uh, for or against a causal association and this could be in the form of uh, clinical trial data uh, published scientific literature uh, sometimes the information which could be coming from the same class of the medicinal products and then information from the other regulatory authority what were is also very useful like that comment uh, a marketing authorization holder uh, may conclude uh, based on their assessment of the uh, signal uh, detected through the monitoring of the utilra business data uh, that the product information or the rmp should be updated through a variation Uh, and if the client goes through a variation process so they have to submit the variation as soon as possible but no later than 3 months uh, well in the second scenario if an active substance is included in the list of union reference dates and a psqr is due to be submitted within 6 months of the completion by the mh uh, of the assessment of a signal uh, which has been detected through the continuous withdrawal business monitoring process uh, the submission of a, a separate stand alone notification is not required Uh, indeed uh, as per the process the signal will be further assessed by the prop or the competent authorities in the member state as appropriate uh, within the psqr procedure 
and uh, there is a third scenario when the marketing authorization holder uh, based on their assessment of a signal detected through the ultra vigilance monitoring uh, concludes that the further analysis of the signal by the competent authority is required uh, in that case they should complete the standalone uh, signal notification form and uh, send it to the agency and to the competent authorities in the member state uh, where the medicinal product is authorized so this should be done as soon as possible but again no later than 30 days after the marketing authorization holder has completed the assessment and uh, concluded the further analysis by the competent authorities required